Hello, I'm Chris Slisher, and welcome to Turning of the Wheel, an intelligent, lively discussion about astrology, art, and spiritual adventure. Timing is everything, and as the great wheel turns, we are best prepared when we are best informed. Join me as I explore concepts that allow us to broaden our view of the world. You'll hear interesting topics, meet fascinating guests, and discover who you really are. Using the time-tested practices of astrology, you'll learn how to accept change as the great wheel of life turns. Astrology, art, and spiritual adventure on Turning of the Wheel TV with Chris Flisher. Hey, welcome to Turning of the Wheel. My name is Chris Flisher. As you know, this is a show about astrology, art, and spiritual adventure. And I'm going to discuss a very interesting uh, characteristic of the astrology chart today for you. Um, one of the most fascinating things about astrology is that when we are born, our birthplace, date, and time are significant indicators of who we are when we arrive on the earthly plane, also known as the planet Earth. And at that moment in time, we are sort of frozen in time, for lack of a better word. We're sort of shrink-wrapped. And at that moment in time, we take on distinct characteristics of that time and place. This is the whole nature of astrology. And astrology really is the very first form of primitive psychology. But think of it this way. When a person is born at a place in time, they have distinct characteristics that they inherit from that birth experience. It's very much like a Carl Jung, the great psychologist, always used the example of a grape on a vine. And he referred to a grape on a vine as the distinct characteristics of a place and time. Now, when you look at a grape and a vine, it has distinct characteristics of soil, of air, of sun, of the climate. All those characteristics are part of what makes that grape perfect for that one point in time. But not all grapes are created equal. Certain years have better vintages than others. And a human being is just the same way. We are born at a place and time that give us distinct characteristics. And at that moment in time, when we look at the chart, if we look at the world of, of that, through that glimpse of that hand at that time, we have a series of planets that align in that wheel, in our zodiacal wheel that we look at. We look out at the world, the world is a giant circle. We look out, and in that framework, in that picture frame, we have distinct planets at distinct locations. I recently spoke about the planet Mars, and today I'm going to talk about the planet Venus. Venus is that planet over there behind me, and uh, as you well know. Now, Venus is interesting in the world of astrology simply because it represents some of the more pleasant characteristics in the astrology chart. Astrology is a composite uh, mixture of uh, formula of, di of disparate opposites in many cases. You know, we think of, of uh, the polarity. You know, the world is filled of, is designed on polarities. We have the night and we have the day. We have the plus, we have the minus. We have the male, we have the female. We have dark, we have light. The analogies go on and on. And in the digital world, we get into the world of the zero and the one. These are opposites, pluses and minuses. And as we look at astrology, the same sort of principles are there. And the same sort of principles are here. So when we think of Mars, we think of the male. When we think of Venus, we think of the female. And that's the planet I'm going to discuss today. Venus is, the, is, is next to, it comes right after Mercury in, within the alignment of coming from the sun. And it is the planet that embodies beauty. It's the planet of love. It's the planet of sensuality. It's the planet of the arts. It has all those characteristics that are part of it. And every one of us has this in their astrology chart. Depends upon where it is in your chart, where it's located, that will give you the characteristics that you possess with regard to all those things I mentioned. Some people have a very, very strong, artists, for example, are very strong aesthetic eye and they have a very strong ability to assimilate beauty and culture and art and, and all those different things. Other people are just not built that way. They may have other talents, there's no question about it, but today I'm talking about the planet Venus just to give you an idea of what this planet, in, what, what this planet is, embodies. And what's important about it primarily is that it is the feminine character of the astrology wheel. It is the feminine, divine feminine, so to speak, of the zodiacal uh, playout, realm of planets. And in that playout 
this is a significant role. It is embodied by the mother. It's embodied by the, the divine feminine, as I mentioned. And in that, we have this sort of the nurturing characteristics of the mother. Of course, that's also represented by the moon, which represents our emotions. But in this case, we're thinking of sensuality. We're thinking of beauty. We're thinking of harmony. All of those optimistic, positive words are words that we apply to the planet Venus. We'll often find artists have a strong placement. Now, when I say a placement, let me clarify what I mean by that. When we cast the astrology chart, we have what's considered to be a, a roadmap. And the roadmap uh, has dots on it which indicate the individual planets. Where those planets land, in which sign they land in, and in which house they land in, determine the characteristics of that planet, and therefore, by extension, determine the way that that planet will manifest in your personality. It's a very important planet to understand and to know in your own personal chart. When you know and you have a familiarity with these specific planets, you're able to find the right people in your life, you're able to act it the right way, and you're able to explain why certain things happen in your life at certain times. It's really critical that that happens. It's an important characteristic that we do this. And when, when I talk about the Divine Feminine, it is a matter of understanding um, what that feminine side is. Some people are afraid of their femininity. This is a characteristic that perhaps men may be afraid of expressing, although we hear a lot of people talking about this. This is in popular culture. He lets his feminine side show. The thing is that it really isn't, shouldn't be so polarizing. We are all a composite of a multitude of planets, a multitude of characteristics, and a multitude of signs and influence, all of which make us unique. It's that, you know, you think of it like making a recipe. There's all these different characteristics that go into it. I would say that if you have a strong feminine side as a male, you, should, you want to express that. There's no reason to let it be suppressed. It's part of who you are. If you're confident in who you are, there's not a problem expressing that. Now, oftentimes we'll find this quality manifests itself through the arts. Venus is very highly regarded in the arts as, as placement. We'll find famous artists such as Vincent van Gogh had a very strong Venus in his chart. It was actually in Pisces, which is where Venus is exalted when it falls into that part of the chart under that sign. And, and as a result of that, he, as we know, he led a very torturous life, but that's largely based on other characteristics in his chart. But it did give him that certain eye, that sensuality eye, that ability to hone in on color, form, content, framework. All of those characteristics were key in what made him so unique. And he was actually a very driven, passionate man who did quite well with the art world. Of course, it, didn't, it took him to die before he had great fame, but he is probably the most highly regarded and easily recognized artist in the world of art. People all know the story about him cutting his ear off and everything else. And then there's a fascinating book out there about this man, and he's one of my all-time favorite artists myself. But when we look at this as a characteristic of human, of human condition and human quality, we see an affinity towards the aesthetic. And the aesthetic is that ability, that sort of intangible quality that I think probably defines taste in some way. And taste is not something that can be, de be taught. Either you have it or you don't. But it is an eye for detail. It is an eye for what looks good together. And Van Gogh epitomized that. He had the ability to fuse paints and color and brush strokes in that marvelous sense of, of color and creativity. Purely just springs off the canvas. And I, would, I have been to, uh, to Amsterdam and I've been to the Van Gogh Museum. And when you see his paintings live, in person, up close and personal, they have a distinct characteristic that is not at all the same as seeing him in a book. And it's that, la it's that true, visceral, canvas, tactile quality that makes his work so unique. I can remember being there, seeing these paintings and having goosebumps on my arms because they were so powerful to be in front of a masterpiece such as that. It's really, really critical. These are things that you can't quantify or, as I said, you can't teach. When you know where Venus is in the chart, this would be someone who, this is a person who has a strong quality for that. Now, Venus is the natural ruler of Taurus and Libra both. It shares two planets. And when you think about it, it sort of makes sense. Uh, the reason I say Taurus is because Taurus loves this, the world of the sensual. It loves the world. Uh, it was, Taurus is always known for their ability to be 
uh, engaged in the sort of the, the finer things in life. You know, they love the good foods, the good wines, the good desserts, the nice cars, the good clothes, all those finer things. Luxury is the word that comes to mind when we think of Taurus. They're very much involved with that. When we think of Libra, we think of the, the strong aesthetic person who has that wonderful sense of balance. And art really is a, uh, a, a sense of balance. It's, it's a combination of having the good and the bad, and it's that sense of balance. And, and, and Libra epitomizes balance. Um, oftentimes, it's very rare that you don't go into a beauty salon anywhere, a, a hairdressing salon, and not see three or four Libras working in that beauty salon. This is very much the case. Beauty, makeup, costumes, designs, fabric, are all the sort of the industries and the, and the, uh, uh, the occupations that Librans find themselves in. And the reason is because they have this strong sense of Venus. Venus is the ruler uh, of, of, these, of these signs. And when that characteristic is there, there is always this strong presence of this divine feminine quality, which is the finer side of life. Now, there's many people who have an artistic bent in life. There's, as I mentioned earlier, Van Gogh, other people like that. But it is this sense of uh, this balance, this sense of wonderful um, ability to infuse and imbue color, fabric, tactile qualities that is all epitomized by Venus. And Venus, can your chart can be in very many different places. You now, you're going to find that. People born around the same time are going to have similar placements as that. It is a fairly quick moving planet, but it's not as fast as the moon, but it does have characteristics that allow it to be a fast moving planet. So it's going to be a shorter window, and occasionally it does go retrograde. Um, but the thing about it is, is that you think of it in comparison to Mars, which I spoke of recently. Mars is the warrior. Mars is the person that's the action, the ambitious one. Venus is the, uh, is the counterpoint to that. That's why that famous book came out years ago, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. It really is very, very much the case. We can see it in almost everything that represents that. We see it in the arts, as I mentioned. We see it in all of those other characteristics and those other, char uh, other fields of interest. Now, when you know where, you're, where, the, where the placement of the chart in your particular astrology chart, where Venus is, you will find how you are able to manifest beauty, sensuality, and relationships with other. Oftentimes, we'll find a very strong connection between what's called the ascendant or the moon or the sun in one person's chart and Venus in the other person's chart. We want to be able to have a certain natural chemistry there for our relationships to work. If it isn't present in some cases, you will find that, that it isn't there. And you'll wonder, you'll, you'll actually have an explanation as to why you did not get along perhaps as a couple. So when you have those characteristics together, and you understand how they match up, it's especially good when it comes to, to matchmaking. Um, many websites these days, the online dating sites, will have astrology as part of their uh, entry, uh, entry, sort of their enter, uh, what do you call it, the intake uh, uh, questionnaire about who the person is. And it's very valuable information. They realize how valuable the information is. You're getting this information about who you are based on these characteristics. A person with Venus in Pisces is much different than a person who's born with Venus in Virgo. In Virgo, it's in detriment. It's not, as, it's not the same character that you want. Virgo is much more of an animated, you know, air, uh, even though it's an earth sign, it's much more of a, um, uh, you know, detail-oriented communication kind of sign. So Venus doesn't fit there. Venus fits in Libra, where you have this lofty airiness and this sense of, of being able to elevate. And, and of course, the, with, when it's in Pisces, we have this strong sense of this essential dream-like quality that Venus imbues so clearly. And Venus has this, you know, a strong component of that quality, especially within regard to the arts, always in the arts. Music, people who have a strong Venus in their chart will have a strong appreciation for music, color, fabrics, new words, art. All of the arts fall into the realm of, very strongly fall into the realm of, of Venus. That's not to say that it's strictly ruled by that, but it has a strong characteristic there. And it's important. So do you know where Venus is in your chart? If you know where it is, you're going to find it has great weight onto where, on only, not only on the sign that it's located in, based on your time of birth, but also the house it's located in. 
The house it's located in is based on the ascendant, as I told you before. That is based on the time of birth. When you're born at a certain time, the wheel sort of stands still, and that dictates the layout of all the houses going around the chart. And then the planets at that moment in time are in the, that realm of that roadmap that gives you your instructions for life. When you know this, you can help guide people to do the right thing. This is why high school guidance counselors would do really well if they had the, uh, the ability to understand astrology and use it effectively. I can't tell you, if I had had the advice when I was 11 or 12 or 14 about myself that I know now, I may have taken a much different path with regard to my life. But ultimately, if I look back at my chart as I first did when I learned it, I realized, gosh, I really am on the right path, which is what led me to where I am today. This is really a manifestation of what I do. I'm also an artist, and in future shows I'm going to be talking about art and spiritual art and how spiritual art is reflective. But having this strong component in my personal chart allows me to express myself in this way. And this is what's the most critical piece of it. It's about personal expression. It's about being able to um, be honest with yourself and open up with regard to relationships. Now, we all heard, as I mentioned earlier, we heard the expression, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. But by the same token, there's a lot of people, a lot of men who have this characteristic of them, this strong feminine quality, and yet they suppress it because they're afraid of some sort of, of, of shame or being made fun of or being not manly enough. That's not the case at all. It is, you know, you, you cannot be a famous artist and not recognize the ability of the strong Venus quality in you. This is a matter of, of trying to keep yourself in line on point, in target, with what your occupation is and who, what it is that drives you. Architects, painters, musicians, as I mentioned, all have a very strong placement of Venus in their chart. And Venus, when you see it in, in, uh, in, in conjunction with Mars, you have a, very, uh, a person who's very passionate because the two together. Oftentimes, I, I have had a client who had Venus and Mars very close together uh, in, in by, by, proxet, by, by proximity in their astrology chart. Being close together lends that Venus a sense of passion. Very sensuous person, very alive and engaged, driven towards things of beauty, driven towards that passionate side because you combine those two qualities together. The thing is that these, the, the elements and the, the placement of the houses and the planets are all part of a mathematical formula that come together and create the composite form of the individual that evolves over time. And the individual evolves over time just as a stream moves through the earth. It's always in motion because time is a helios, just like a corkscrew. So time goes around and around and around. As it says, history repeats itself. Time is a cyclical construct. But at the same time that it's going around and around, it's also moving forward. And as it moves forward, it takes you to a different place. So themes do reoccur in your life, but they reoccur in a different setting. Just like a stream. A stream is always on motion. It's always moving. You cannot stop a stream. When we step in a stream, you can't step twice into the same stream, if you think about it. Put your foot in once, and by the time you sit your foot, other foot in, the stream has already moved on. It's that sense of motion. And as you evolve, your planets will take on new characteristics. And you may not, and, and, and timing is a large part of what makes certain characteristics of the astrology chart come alive. They come alive at certain times based on aspects and transits, which I will get into in other shows down the road further. So a person may be born with a very good placement of, of, of Venus in their chart, and yet it doesn't come to fruition until later in their life. And that's because a series of events had to happen in order to get them there. Oftentimes, events in life happen to people and they create character. It was Mike Wallace who once said that the, only, the most interesting people he had ever interviewed in his life were those who faced challenges, those who had difficult hurdles to overcome. And we can look back through history and find lots of interesting people who went on to become incredibly powerful people and yet started out with a much different set of circumstances that were much different than where they became. But it's through that ch constant trial and error, through that climbing out of that, that place that brings people to, the, to their fullest need. And I often use the analogy of a cuckoo clock. When you think of a, of a cuckoo clock, 
uh, you think of all of these wheels going at different speeds inside the cuckoo clock. They're all turning along, going along at different speeds. And then when they all get to that certain point and the cuckoo bird comes out, that is the moment of arrival. And different people arrive at different times. Some, some, so their, their planets and their aspects and their characteristics are, you know, are uh, impacted and affected and triggered by certain events as that alignment happens. Many people start out very young. We've heard the stories about the, uh, the person who achieves his highest claim, acclaim in high school, only to go on to fall down later. You know, he may be the captain of the football team or whatever, or she may be the, 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 the queen of the prom. And yet you look back at them several years later and they're not what they once were. They may have declined. The same is true of the inverse. Someone may start out very shy. Take Winston Churchill, for example, incredibly shy child growing up as he was in England. And yet he went on, he was very, very afraid of speaking in public. And yet he used to hide behind his mother's skirts. And yet he went on to become one of the great orators of all time, holding together a country in the direst of times in World War II, pulling that country through just through the sheer power of his words and his ability to communicate. This is a man tested by his astrology, tested by his certain circumstances that he was given at birth, that he then evolved into and was able to surmount them, to overcome them, and move on forward. It's when you overcome your challenges and, and, and make them better that you become the real person that you're meant to be. This is an incredibly important piece of what it is to be an evolutionary person. And the strongest people you find are the people who have difficult characteristics in their astrology chart. And it's important to understand that. So the more intimate you become with your astrology chart, the more information that you have. It is a, it is a palette rich in imagery, rich in symbolism, and rich in information. It is, really is your owner's manual. It is your owner's manual. And that map that you're given when you're born, the astrology map, has your inherent instructions for life. And when you look at that, you can see when to act, when to hold, and when to fold, as I said earlier. Critical, critical timing. Timing really is truly everything. And certain planets become activated at certain times and others become inactive at certain times. But when they are right and they are there, you can help guide people. It's incredibly valuable for, uh, for a child, for a parent of a child to know this and how to guide them. You want to be able to influence your children in ways that allow them to be lived to their fullest, you know, be all that they can be, literally. That's what you want to see happen. And if you know a person has a certain characteristic, you want to be able to guide them in that way. Now, I would argue that much of astrology is um, better used when looking back in some ways. It's a theme-based uh, divination tool that allows us to look back and say, ah, yes, I see that. And we can see it with precision. And when I talk about precision in astrology, I mean degree to degree, because astrology is a mathematical construct. It's a mathematical um, playing field in which there's degrees and numbers. And when you have degrees and numbers lining up in angles that are geometrically precise, like the square, 90 degrees, or the 45 degree angle, or the 30 degree angle, or the opposition, 180 degree angles, we begin to see action happen in the astrology chart between the certain characteristics that the planets espouse in those areas of the chart. It's very, very critical to have that happen. It's important that you understand that. So if you understand that you have a Mars that is in difficult combination to, to, uh, to, to Venus, as I was mentioning earlier, or if they're in close proximity, you're going to see a certain passion towards a certain thing. This is the secret to astrology. It's about understanding who you are. It is the world's first psychology. And it's incredibly accurate. And the longer it goes on, the more empirical data we have, the more rich it becomes, the more symbolic it becomes, the more useful it becomes. I have a psychologist friend who actually asks for advice sometimes because you could spend months in front of a, in, in a chair with a psychologist talking about your problems and, they, and you get into the point where you say, I'm sick of this, I'm not doing it anymore. And then they say, oh, you're cured. But with, a psycho with an astrologer, you can find that out in a short session. So I encourage you to become intimate with your charts. The best way to become intimate with your charts is to actually go online, find out what your real chart is based on your birth date, your birth place, and your birth time. Time is most important. It sets the stage for the whole area of your life. And then, as you're born, that is a static fingerprint of who you are. All the planets are there. The Sun, the Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto all have characteristics, and they all have different weight. Planets that are further out 
take a longer time to move, so they have more generational impact. But the planets that are in close, the personal planets, Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury, up to Jupiter, are the interpersonal planets, Venus, are the personal planets that are, give you the most insight as to where you'll be. They move quickly in your chart, but when you're given certain characteristics, you can't help but rise to the occasion and see how they work. And when you work with a trusted astrologer such as myself, you'll be able to see the real true value of what it can bring to you. There is so much information there. It is rich in image information. It is rich in imagery. It is rich in detail. And your assets are there as well as your liabilities. And when you understand your assets, you can play up to them, and then you can work on your liabilities. Your liabilities are the areas where you'll find the challenges in your life. And those challenges are there for a reason. We all have challenges in our lives, and those challenges bring us to a place where we have to act to solve them. If the roof didn't leak, we would not fix it. But many times the roof is leaking in our lives, and we have to fix it. And that's what astrology can help guide you to. It'll be about timing, precision, and when you work with, a, with an astrologer who does an authentic reading, you can get incredibly valuable information. Stick with me. I can help you through this. I'm going to be educating you, and contact me if you want to. My website is www.turningofthewheel.com. And my name is Chris Lisher. Thank you.